Happy Easter from the Barnsworths. Hey everyone, welcome back to No Ordinary Path. I'm John, this is my lovely wife, Kristen. And uh, we are a travel nurse family, travels around the United States in our 37 foot travel trailer we have affectionately named Wendy. I am the nurse taking travel contracts and I get to bring my entire family along. We've got three kids and a dog and that's what we do. We are still in quarantine. Surprise, Yay. surprise, like many of you guys out there. And we have come to the end of our footage. And so now everything is going to be real time <laughs> henceforth. Right. For a while. Right. That's the truth. <laughs> so it's a little more real talk and yeah. Yeah. So what we have for you today is um, just a bunch of maintenance -y kind of things that we're doing with Wendy. We figured it was a perfect time for us to get some stuff done, to update some things, make some changes that we've been wanting to change. So we hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you guys get some uh, ideas for your own RV out there. And all you full-timers that are out there, comment below and let us know how you're spending your quarantine. That's right. And if you have any special projects you're working on. That's right, because we can all use those. Yeah. Well, first things first, we've got some stickers to update on our board back here. These are all the cool places that we have been. Despite the fact that this contract kind of got cut short, we did get to go visit some places kind of en route to Phoenix. We're gonna hang up a sticker for Carlsbad Caverns, White Sands, New Mexico, Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument, and Tumacacari National Historic Park. Yeah, so for White Sands and Carlsbad, that was a pretty epic episode, so you can check that one out up yeah. here. And for all the other ones, check out uh, contract number six playlist. I think that was just funny, I was looking at this earlier, that the last sticker that we have on here is Rocky Mountain. And for the entire Columbia contract, there's nada. There's nothing. Yeah, we there should have a baby. Uh, yeah, Baby James, here. a Baby, Baby James, James sticker. sticker. Okay, there is one place that we went that we have mailed off Junior Ranger books to, um, and that was Buffalo, Buffalo National, National River. River. <laughs> Pivotal moment here. I told Kristen this is uh, this is it. So as that bench comes out, there's no going back. So you said, "Are you sure?" And I said, uh, "I hope so." I hope so. <laughs> but look, I have uh, we've gotten rid of the IKEA table. It was it was not good. I've emptied out everything, and I got a new set of drawers. I think it's, I'm hoping it's going to free up a lot more space. Oh, here's hoping for sure. Here's hoping. This is our new table. You can't really see it very well right now. We'll show you the finished product. He dropped the door. It's actually a wooden card table. I really like the finish though. It's got this kind of like gray whitewash finish. Let's see. Collecting all the screws there, baby. Yeah. Wow. It looks like a shadow. Yeah, is it a shadow? Nope. It's not a shadow. Nope, that's, that's not a shadow. What? Okay, we're headed to Goodwill to drop off the beast. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's not disgusting. It's yeah, just... It's hot chocolate stains all over. I wiped all the hot chocolate stains off of it. I wiped the dirt off of it. It has been in the desert for a few days because swapped out our table. <laughs> Bye table! I am replacing screens, uh, Wendy's screens, two of them specifically. The front door here that kids like to close the door, you know, by like doing this, they push it closed. And the flies in the desert are kind of nasty. And also, Aaron's screen on the uh, emergency escape hatch that we have has been pushed out 
uh, and broken. So I am replacing that one as well. And that's the nice thing is this is an easy DIY, DIY thing to do while I'm waiting for my beard to regrow. So while you're waiting for your beard to regrow, there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> it, so you can shave it in four days. Leave me be. Oh. Leave me alone, wife. Yeah. You all know how much I hate the shower. Well, John found a shower head that makes the RV shower way more bearable. And he mounted it in the perfect place so I can actually stand under it and it has good pressure. And if it has to be an RV shower, this is the one I want because it's actually pretty good. Have you you've taken a shower in it so far? Yep. Haven't you? you like it? Yeah. I love it. This is it. It is an oxygenics shower, um, but it has all these different settings on there. So the middle one is like the standard oxygenics like stream like we're used to, and then it has this kind of middle one and an outer one. And the outer one is more like a rainfall. And I like the middle one actually. The middle one is quite nice. This one, the problem was we didn't want to drill anything, you know, into this. So what we did was we used Gorilla Glue and that sucker's not going anywhere. So we put it up in the middle in the very center and now I can stand under it. Ta-da! See? It's perfect. So, um, I hope you guys appreciate the realness that I bring you because my hair is extremely dirty and I have no makeup on and I love you enough to show you my new shower head pre-shower. <laughs> Our old 12 volt battery was pretty much toast as we drained it down past 50% more than once. So we wanted to increase our amp hours and therefore went to Costco, purchased a couple of golf cart batteries that are six volts a piece, wired them together into a 12 volt system and it has been working out great for us ever since. projects that we've been wanting to do for a really long time but just haven't had time for it is to update our junior ranger badges. We had two banners and they were completely full and between contracts we managed to pick up something like 12 new badges amongst the, the three of them. I think they each got four so there was no room to put them so we bought an extra banner and today I'm going to separate them so they each have their own junior ranger banner and extra room to add more as soon as all of this COVID stuff lets up and we can visit national parks again. This is quite a mess right now because we tried to organize them by like columns so we would have Aaron's column, Ethan's column, and Chloe's column. the few that are missing you will each have 38 badges 38 badges that's crazy Oh, yes you are. <laughs> I wanted to speak to this. This is the greatest, grossest little machine ever. Um, 
So this is the Flowjet Macerator Pump. Yes, doesn't it have a fantastic name? And oh, we need to name it. Like I, I, I want to call it the Scrinder. Scrinder. No, that. Uh, you don't like that one. Scrinder. Okay. Yeah. What's the Scrinder? Well, yeah, I know, like the Schwagen is. Yeah. But I think you should do something with the jet. <laughs> jet. <laughs> In the past, Kristen and I had to fill the Schwagen up, roll it over here, and then pray hard. That as we lift, yeah, it smells fantastic. As we lifted it up into the truck, it wouldn't spill on either one of us. But this way, it pumps it up in there, and it's there's no solid waste. It's all just the slurry. <laughs> it does smell, though. I will say it does smell. It does smell right but now. But it's nice because the thing has it's got like a pump rating of well over 100 feet. So you could pump it into a garden hose inside of somebody's house, and they're like going down through the U bend in their toilet, and then it does the smell, and there's no mess and. It's got a flow jet to it and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I don't like about it is the power cables. You see this jerry rig system I have to do with the jumper cables? The, like our rig is, what? you know, almost 38 feet, 40 feet long. Oh my gosh. And I can't, the power cables are only like eight feet. Not even that, maybe five feet. It's just, oh, so that's the only gripe I have. Because it's supposed it. to plug into your battery, but the well, battery's all might, the way up front. It might be, but the battery's the front, so that yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. I've been asked to check on the bobber to make sure that it's not bobbing. Did we fill it all the way now? It's it's right there. Oh gosh. <laughs> it wasn't bobbing a, sweat, a second ago, I swear. Did we fill it that oh. full before? Oh no, no, we would never fill it that full because we couldn't lift it. Chris and I, we'd only fill it like half full because Chris and I could never lift it up. But interesting, like the kid's black tank was full because for those of you RVers that know, you know how it burps when you go to flush it? Gross. It was doing that. So I know I know it was full. And of course the tank lights were full too, but you can't always trust the tank lights after you've been doing this long enough. Stuff sticks to them and they're not trustworthy. That holds a full black tank for, at least for the front or for the back for the kids. Yeah. So. Yeah, Crazy. It's nice. I'm gonna give it a little flush just to get the stuff that's in. Okay, so we're here at Orangewood and we are doing a poo run. We need a water run. A swagging run and a water run. Different hoses, promise. <laughs> Different hoses, we promise. The next thing that I'm going to tackle is the walls. Pretty much all, I think, all, with the exception of like two items. Everything's been falling off the walls and all I can think of for reasoning why is that it's so dusty here that it's just no longer sticking. The command stickers aren't sticking any longer. So I'm going to go through and clean all the walls. We have five days left here in the desert. I know it's still going to get a little bit dusty, but I feel like I can get most of the build, off, build up off of the walls and get our pictures re, uh, re hung. So. That's what I'm up to now. This is such an exciting video. to do another roof treatment and it's this is the one I was gonna do this one by myself um, this is the RV best rubber roof cleaner so it's not so much the cleanliness of the roof that I'm too worried about because really the top that I can see from the drove footage isn't that bad but it's more about conditioning it since it's rubber I want it to have a more of a supple, supple kind of rubber texture then it gets hard and cracked if, because the UV. So anyway, long story short, we were gonna do this out here in the desert today. Got a big old full thing of water for it. There was kind of two concerns that go with this. One, I know this is a chemical, so I feel a little kind of eh about like just flushing it out onto the dirt. Like I know it would dry in the desert and there's not really any plants and stuff around. I mean, there is on that side farther away, but we're sitting on dirt for the most part. Um, so there's that, but also like, even though I have a 65 gallon bag of water in the back of my truck that I was going to use for this, it talks about having to rinse it over and over so many times and make sure that you clean around the outside as you rinse it off that I'm concerned 
because if you don't, it will leave streaks on the RV. So I'll, I, Chris and I talked, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until we can go to like a car wash and kind of do this there. I feel better about going to a car wash because that way it'll, it'll run down into the drain. Um, and then also just, I won't run out of water. <laughs> and I don't want to run out of water and have streaks down Wendy's sides. The other thing about this that's kind of interesting is we plan on doing a video in the future about it too because Wendy, is, being an ultralight, is a non-walkable roof. So doing a roof cleaning treatment system is a little bit more of a challenge than their typical RV where you just hop up the back ladder and go to town. So watch for that. It'll be coming out here soon, sometime. <laughs> It'll be coming out eventually. I'm not sure when, but uh, yeah, that'll be some tips and tricks for dealing with things like the passports that don't have walkable roofs. Well, since quarantine has given us plenty of time to do things around the house, I figured, and along with Kristen, of course, gave me permission to do this, <laughs> that it was time to update the map. Because, as you can see, we need to fill in Utah and also Oklahoma and Texas. So uh, that's pretty neat. We actually covered the whole western half of the United States. That's that's pretty cool. Whenever we cross a state off, the way that it works is that we have to spend one night, an overnight, in that state with Wendy. We'll take our route, you know, from Arizona, go down through Texas, try to shoot through Louisiana if we can get through the borders and up this way. Anyway, we're very glad that you're here. Thanks for following us. Um, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell so that you can follow us in real time. It'll be interesting to see how this goes with us traveling across state yeah. boundaries and stuff. I know Atlas has already sent us a letter of basically like a writ of transit that says that this guy's a healthcare provider and should be allowed to pass through any blockades and stuff. So we will definitely be recording if we run into any of that kind of stuff. Yep. And uh, yeah, just the journey and kind of how we deal with it because normally we would like to stop and stuff. We have a week to get there. We leave on Thursday for Asheville, North Carolina, which is super exciting. And next week we are going to air our Southwest part two wrap up. Part two. <laughs> our second <laughs> Southwest contract wrap part up. Me. Yeah, we do have some footage that we have never aired yet that was prior to all the COVID stuff that we just didn't get to include anything. So we're gonna add that to that episode, all right? So that's all I have to say. I'm gonna go drink this now. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.